What's up guys, Taylor here with a new episode of Stubble Tech. In this video, we're gonna take a look at iOS 11 Beta 1 running on my iPad Air 2. Over the last couple years, Apple has really been pushing the iPad as more of a work-related device, and they are definitely pushing it more than ever this year with iOS 11 for the iPad. Now, I know that my iPad Air 2 is a little bit older than the Pro models, but other than pencil functionality, the iPad is getting a lot of the same features. I've highlighted a few things I wanna to talk to you guys about, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's talk about this new control center. Apple made jokes at WWDC Monday that the name of Mac OS High Sierra was a fully baked name. If that's the case, then I have to assume that the new control center was put in an oven that someone forgot to turn on because this thing is not baked at all. It seems like a really kind of half done idea. It looks like a jumbled mess. Um, I get what they were going for with the redesign, but it looks really messy and just very unlike Apple. There's some nice functionality to it, but Apple has always succeeded in blending functionality and a beautiful design to complete their software. Um, the ability to customize the control center is nice and I will give Apple kudos for that, but it doesn't make things look less messy. It just kind of adds more to the mess, honestly. So I hope we see some definite changes in this before the final release of iOS 11 in the fall. Next up, we have this new dock at the bottom of the iPad. If you're a Mac user, this will look really similar to you, and I think it's a really nice idea by Apple. Not only does it blend iOS and Mac OS to make the iPad feel and function and work more like a computer than just a streaming device, but it looks nice and provides some nice functionality. You can drag and drop icons that you want on the dock and remove the ones that you don't. And bonus points to Apple for allowing you to pull an app from the dock right onto your screen and to start some split screen multitasking. It has a really nice animation and it feels very fluid when you're using it and it just works extremely well. Moving on to the new files app, I have to say that this thing is awesome and so useful. It's a really easy way to organize and store all of your documents without needing any third party applications. It can be accessed from anywhere on your iPad, which is also really nice. And you can even drag and drop pictures or notes into a file when using split screen. And once again, if you're a Mac user, you will notice that it also borrows color-coded tags from Mac OS, which is a really welcome feature to the iPad. So you can color code you know, certain types of documents so they're really easy to find just by looking for that color. I think the Files app is gonna be a really great addition to the iPad and I'm really happy that Apple is going in this direction with the iPad. Another thing I wanted to talk about real quick was the right side of the app dock. You'll notice this thin line separating the apps that you actually put in your dock versus these apps that just kind of show up every now and then. And so basically what's going on here is that on the right side of your dock, um, the very last app is actually going to be the last app that you've used on your iPhone or your Mac. So that's really cool. Another thing I really don't understand is the way you have to close apps now. It just seems overly confusing to me. When you swipe up now, you'll see this messy control center and all of your open apps. Before you could just swipe them away and unless I'm missing something or if Apple fixes it in future betas, the only way to close everything is to actually X out of each app. And I cannot begin to understand why Apple would switch to this method of closing apps from the easy way that they used to have. So as we get to the end of this video, there are some really cool new animations and little changes that are nice as well. And I really hate to end this video on a gripe, but the final thing I wanna talk about is the way that notifications are handled in iOS 11. I'm really not a fan of the new layout. Your notifications seem to be almost hidden. You have to pull down from the top of your screen and your lock screen kind of reappears, which could really be confusing for a lot of people. If you didn't have any immediate notifications, you actually have to swipe up again on this earlier today tab. It just seems really confusing for a notification system that really didn't need a whole lot of tweaking. Overall, guys, I'm really impressed with the updates Apple has brought to the iPad. It's also pretty amazing how smooth this first beta of iOS 11 runs, especially on my iPad Air 2, which is an older machine. There is a ton of more stuff to talk about regarding iOS 11, but in this video, I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about some iPad specific features. So stay tuned for my iOS 11 on iPhone video. And until then, make sure to subscribe to my channel, click that like button and share this video. And guys, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in my next video.